In this video, I'd like to share my approach to completing my portfolio when applying for medical school. If you're new here, I'm Hugh and I'm a first year medical student. And this is part of a video series on the journey I took to getting here. GAMSAT results are out. I hope that you got the score you're after. I'm really sorry if you didn't. Uh, fuck, it sucks. Been there myself. I uh, know what it's like to sit it again and again and again. Regardless, for those of you who will be applying, the med applications are open and they close pretty soon. I guess a few of you are probably frantically completing your portfolio. In this video, I'm gonna outline how I completed mine and why I think it worked, but the results may vary for other people. As you know, it is a culmination of your own unique experiences and your own unique style. Still, I do hope I offer a perspective that may be useful, uh, particularly if you have applied before or you've tried something and it hasn't worked in the past, so maybe this would be useful for you. But please, please make sure you read thoroughly the portfolio guidelines that are published by the universities that accept them. All right, let's jump into it. So what is a portfolio? Essentially, the portfolio is used by some medical schools to assess characteristics that aren't accurately captured in GPA and GAMSAT. These are things like leadership, teamwork, service to the community, you know, excellence in, in life in general. And I guess you could sort of see them a little bit akin to a resume or a CV as they are sort of uniquely your experiences. Additionally, Notre Dame and I think Macquarie University has a personal statement, which then allows you to reflect a little bit more on why you want to do medicine and show the university that before getting to the interview stage. If you don't know already, which schools are using the portfolio? So the main ones are the University of Notre Dame, which has both a Fremantle and a Sydney campus, and the University of Wollongong. So first up, we'll look at the University of Wollongong. The University of Wollongong has a big focus on rural medicine, and so your portfolio really does need to reflect that as best you can. If we take a look at their sort of their guide, the statement that starts is the UAW or University of Wollongong Graduate Medicine Medicine Admissions Portfolio allows you to identify personal experiences and qualities that the graduate medicine considers desirable in medical students and graduate doctors, and also to demonstrate your connection with a regional, rural, or remote community. So as you can see there, they're looking for things that they deem suitable in a, in a doctor, um, but also those who are connected to rural, regional communities. There's sort of four domains that they, they look at. These are leadership, the capacity to work with others, service ethic, and a high level of performance in an area of human endeavor. So just to get a bit more detail on, on those, when you're looking at leadership, we take this from their, their guide. When considering leadership in the portfolio, the applicant needs to have displayed significant decision-making ability in a position, interest, or area of work, or being recognized for disability. Additionally, it does note that you can have some progression with something. If you're going to put something down in the leadership category, make sure that you were actually in charge. You had significant decision-making cap capabilities. What's really good as well is if you can show that you were, say, uh, promoted, or you showed progression with an organization or within a team or something like that. They really like to see that because and you're recognized for excellence and showing that, that leadership quality. The capacity to work with others is, is fairly straightforward. Essentially, that's teamwork because they want to see good doctors who can actually work as a team. Um, and then service ethic, the other one that's important to note, they basically state here that it's outside of your normal employment. To clarify a little more, ideally applicants should demonstrate involvement in activities outside of usual personal interests as this demonstrates participation mainly through welfare or benefit of others. So essentially they want to see you doing volunteer work, charity work, etc., that aren't directly related to say what you do as a day job, but might be a way to actually help the community. And finally, high level of performance in an area of human endeavor really looks at those extracurricular activities that you've done really well in. And that could be things like, it could be sport. So were you a competitive athlete? If it was university, did you get a scholarship for something? Did you get papers published? Anything that uh, won't be captured in say your GPA or GAMSAT, but it's something you'd really like to show that you've really worked hard for something and you've done well. One of the things about the Wollongong portfolio here is you do get quite a lot of opportunity to put e examples in. So you have five examples that you can provide provide per section, but the word limit's pretty tight. I think it's around about 300 characters. So you've got to be very succinct. You'll also have things like how many hours you did. That could be, you know, a weekly, total, whatever it is. Use whatever you think the best estimate is. And you also need to put a reference in. So make sure, you know, they say that if you don't, you'll be excluded. So make sure you please put one in. But if you don't have a reference, say for instance, you got a certificate for something, it's yours. You no, know, it's not gonna, you can't reference it that way. I just say certificate available at request. The other university that uses the portfolio is the University of Notre Dame. So they have three main domains and a personal statement that they assess when you're submitting. 
These domains are leadership, service to community or church involvement, and other academic or life achievements. So you see they're kind of similar to the University of Wollongong, although service to the community also includes church involvement. That's because the University of Notre Dame is a religious institution as well. They are a Catholic university, and so they do want to see if you have been involved in church groups, regardless of the faith. In terms of going through the, the actual statements and, and how they define things like leadership, for mine, I just used the same definitions that I found in the Wollongong template. With each of those experiences, you have up to 480 characters, so you get a little bit more than you do with uh, University of Wollongong, and you can add up to four experiences per theme. You've got to be a little bit more uh, considered with what you put in. You can't just add everything that you think useful. Uh, you really want to try and highlight the best things that you've done that might be the most appropriate to what they're looking for. But finally, they also have a personal statement. And so this personal statement is an opportunity for you to outline why you want to do medicine, but also why you might want to do medicine within Notre Dame and in the context of the Catholic faith. It doesn't mean that you need to be religious. It does mean that you will need to respect the fact that it is a religious institution and that you'll be taught under certain principles. But they do want to see people from all sorts of uh, walks of life. And so at least within my cohort, we have you know, Jewish, we have Muslim, we have Christian, we have um, Catholics, we have a variety of people from all different walks of life. And we have atheists. They're not, they're not discriminatory in terms of your faith. Uh, they just want to see that you're okay and you understand uh, what it would mean to be taught within that uh, within the faith. But here's the difficult thing. One of the things about writing a personal statement is we have to convey why you want to do med. And at least my experience with doing it was kind of had fairly generic reasons. Like, you know, I wanted to help people. I really love the medical sciences. I like solving problems. And I was looking for something that was, you know, a little bit more hands-on, a little bit more person-centered. And, you know, chatting to a lot of my friends, we all kind of have pretty similar sort of motivations. And you probably have similar motivations too. That's why you've chosen to do medicine and not something else. But what's really important then when you're writing the personal statement is not to have some cookie cutter of, yes, these are the three things, three reasons I'm doing it, but to outline why and what got you to that feeling. For me, you know, I fell in love with medical sciences, so to speak, as I was finishing school, but it wasn't until I started working as a ski patroller that I really figured out that medicine was something I absolutely had to pursue because the being able to put that sort of science into practice in a way that actually helps people in a unique environment for me it was exceptionally rewarding and it just like fueled that fire. So make sure you document what it is that you've experienced that allows you to, to get to where you are now, to get to why. So what did I actually do? <laughs> well, I'd approach, applied a couple of times, as you know, and it's hard to tease out whether my less than stellar GAMSAT score in the past uh, was actually really what knocked me out or whether I had botched up the portfolio, probably a mixture of both. I think in the past where I went wrong with my personal statement was it was a bit too generic and it wasn't really from the heart, kind of trying to be a bit cookie cutter, tell them what they want to hear, but I wasn't really being me. And so it is a bit of a risk, but really think it's always better to just show who you are and be really honest about your story there. And that'll connect much better with the reader than something that they've read, you know, a hundred times from everybody else. I did, however, submit the same, well, same portfolio. So to Wollongong and to Notre Dame. So I just used the, the word limit for Wollongong, which is a bit shorter and submitted the same experiences over. I just adjusted where I thought they would fit best because the leadership fit it well into leadership. There was service to community of church or service ethic. They fit nicely together. And then I found some of the more meaty teamwork examples I was able to put into other life achievements uh, for the University of Notre Dame. But what do you write? And this might be a bit of a point of contention between people. You may have done it uh, a different way to the way I did, great. Um, you may be doing it the same way, or you may have tried various things. What I did this time was I essentially just documented exactly what I did with each experience. I sprinkled within that a little bit about what I, I got out of it and what I found rewarding, but I, I made sure I was really concrete about the activities and the, the specifics of what happened. And I thought this was important because ultimately the assessors are looking for certain traits and what they're going to do is they're going to deduce them from the activity. If you can show that you did a volunteer activity, it was X amount of hours, it helped homeless people at a certain place, or whatever it might have been, they're going to see those traits that they're after, but they can also see very specifically what your role was within that. 
Some people spoke a little bit more about what they learned from the experience. I didn't do that quite as much. I, I mentioned what I found rewarding, uh, but for me, what I learned was more in my personal statement and everything else was very matter of fact. Additionally, a couple of things that have been mentioned and I think helped me this time because I hadn't done this in the past was don't front load your, your portfolio. And what I mean by this is don't put a bunch of experiences in from the last two years and then have nothing else prior to that. Because what these schools want to see is that, you know, have you consistently performed over time? And you, you don't have to be a superstar, but have you done things consistently for the last 10 years, for the last 20 years, uh, whatever that might be. Additionally, like, don't pretend you're something you're not. You know, if you're 21, you're probably not going to be a CEO. You're probably not going to have had 10 papers published or anything like that. You may have, you know, worked in retail, volunteered with Surf Life Saving or done something like that. That's what they want to see. They don't expect you to be way up here yet. So please don't front, don't pretend to be somebody you're not. Just do exactly, just put in exactly what you did. And finally, with your references, check, <laughs> check that they'll actually be a reference for you. If not, find someone who will be. Most of the schools say that if you don't put a reference in, they won't count that experience. Uh, so make sure you've got one in there. The exception is if you have, say, a certificate. I know I had two certificates in mine, which were from things that I did quite a while ago. And essentially, I just wrote certificate available at request uh, rather than, you know, trying to figure out a way to get somebody to verify something that happened 20 years ago. So a couple of things I want to jump into now is I thought maybe I'd give you just a couple of examples it might be helpful. So the first one's from leadership. I was working as a territory manager with a big company. Basically what I said was promoted to position X after showing excellence in an associate role. I was now responsible for these things and named them out and these provide services to so essentially I was just showing that I'd had progression within a you know within a business I had been promoted into a role that meant I was responsible for a bunch of things um, and essentially had leadership and where we provided those services it was very matter of fact like a CV under the service to community or church or service ethic headline so for me it was essentially working as a volunteer ski patroller but if you were thinking about a way to template this out I bet it would basically write something along the lines of you know working as a volunteer the title at whatever area then i would define what i did daily and i found this work exceptionally rewarding because we had to work in a challenging environment complex injuries teamwork and the ability to make a difference and then finally under you know other academic or life achievements was as a research student and an honor student completed a vocational research scholarship and subsequent honors degree worked with a team to conduct research into tissue targeted therapies and diagnostics and prostate cancer published two project posters at x y symposiums and achieved a high distinction for my honors thesis but essentially tried to follow a very matter of fact straightforward kind of way of presenting exactly what i did and a little bit about what i enjoyed well, there you have it. I don't know if this helped. A bit of an overview of the, the portfolio process and what I did to apply for mine. I think the best thing to do with this is just make sure that you think hard about what experiences you had that fit into those. Make sure you can demonstrate experience over time. So start back when you're in high school uh, or earlier if possible with you know, reasonable examples. Don't front load. Don't pretend like you're something you're not. And then, you know, when you're writing a personal statement, make sure you're honest about it. You know, we all have similar reasons for wanting to be here, but the, the thing that brought you to that is what makes you unique and is the uniqueness that you'll be able to bring to medicine. So make sure they see that. If you like this, thank you for watching all the way to the end. I hope it helped. Please reach out in the comments if you have any questions. I've probably missed many things, so let me know. And share this with a friend if you think they might find it helpful. And good luck with your applications. Peace.